The Mercedes-Benz E-Class has had a long storied history with India. It was Merck's first model to be officially launched in the country and 30 years later, it's still going strong topping the charts for Mercedes-Benz. And it has been Mercedes India's best selling model for this reason, for the back seat because ever since the E-Class was launched with long wheel base, it has been an absolute killer. People are almost wondering why do you even need an S-Class because of the sheer room on offer. However, with this car, things are only better. It's grown longer in length, wheelbase is slightly better as well, and as a result, space inside has improved. Now, it's just not about the room and the space on offer, but the overall comfort. And when you talk about comfort, you have to talk about the seats. Now, the seats on this car are absolutely fantastic. The cushioning, the support, and just the contouring is just on point. However, to add even more comfort, you can do some things to the seat. The first one, is to recline it 36 degrees and that gives you a fair amount of recline you have these lovely pillows which we all loved with the older e-class but that's not all if this room is not enough which is going to be very surprising because it's plenty you have a boss mode as well which means at the touch of a button the passenger seat can be pushed all the way ahead now it takes a bit of time but that's not really a complaint the fact that you can get acres of room at just the touch of a button and then you know keep your leg up and sit comfortably. That is something you cannot do on many sedans. Now, the other thing, of course, you get a wireless charger in here. You have some space for storage, two USB type C ports as well. And of course, AC was a big issue with the older E-Class. Cooling in the rear of the cabin wasn't adequate. However, with the four zone climate control, vents in the center and vents on the pillars, that problem is not there anymore. It cools quite effectively. And if it's a really hot day, you also have blinds for the rear and you have automatic blinds for the windows as well. You have this manual blind for this little quarter glass at the rear. A bit tricky to use, but overall a pretty, pretty good place. In the center, because you have the chauffeur pack, you get a wireless charger as well. Of course, this whole thing can be flipped up, you know, to open up room for a third passenger, but I doubt they'll be comfortable because there's a big transmission hump in the center wireless charging pad like i mentioned is right here as well and overall the seat comfort what's extra on this is under thigh support that means if you are long legged like i am if you're over six feet tall guys under thigh support is always a bit of an issue for us not on this car you can extend this i mean back seat comfort is really the talking point of course, they want to make it a blend. They want people to sit in the back and also drive it once in a while on the weekends. However, the hero is the back seat. Now, seat comfort and amenities is all well and good, but what about ride comfort? It is a very important aspect on a long wheelbase car, definitely on the long wheelbase E-Class. Now, it does not get air suspension. It got on the earlier 350 model. However, on the 200, it never got air suspension. This one is the same. The setup is inherently on the softer side, but the low speed bumps is what are felt inside the cabin. On Wallowy highways, you don't really move about that much, but when it comes to the small bumps, cracks, broken patches, you will feel it inside the cabin and it's not a completely hushed experience. That said, when you are on the highway, when you have long sweeping roads, this car sits nice and flat and very, very composed, very little movement and you can almost have a nice big snooze without getting disturbed. But some things I find are a miss, like the Burmester 4D sound system, which is there on the car, but the 4D effect is there only on the front seats and not on the rear. What the 4D sound means is that the front seats have exciters built in them that add a bit more bass and thump depending on the song. The overall experience is something that you definitely feel. I think the only explanation is you'd probably want a nice 4D sound when you have tuned into your own music, you're driving on your own, so you want that effect. But having it in the rear seats would have been a big plus. Then of course is the option of rear entertainment screens. There's nothing in here that basically allows you to control the command center. It's gonna be either voice activated or you're gonna to have to order your chauffeur to do it for you. So that I think is a bit of a miss. But apart from that, there's no real complaint. Space, excellent, comfort, very, very good. Ride not the best on bad patches, but overall not too bad. So it definitely is a car for the back seat, but Mercedes, like I mentioned, also want you to drive it on the weekend. So let's quickly see what it's like from behind the wheel. Now, it's not going to be often, but on those rare occasions that you find yourself in the driver's seat of the E-Class, it's not like you're going to be 
left feeling like a chauffeur because even though this is a nice big car it's not as big as the S class so it doesn't really give you the feeling of being out of place when you're behind the steering wheel it's a nice blend between the C class and the S class so even though you're behind the wheel it feels like a car that's meant to be driven that you definitely can drive especially on one off occasions during the weekends and that's what even mercedes say they want the customers to be in the back seat from monday to friday but on that weekend they are more than happy to let them take the wheel because it's not like this car is boring to drive yes powering it is a 2 liter four cylinder turbo petrol engine 204 horsepower 320 nm 0 to 100 a quick 7 and a half seconds of course with these cars it's not really about those numbers but the inherent character of the car is that of a relaxed sedan and while the claim numbers are quick real world scenario is slightly different in our test the e class clocked in a 0 to 100 kph time of 8.25 seconds and even through the gears it wasn't lightning quick it does get drive modes between eco comfort sport and individual but even though you put it in sport the responses are amped up slightly the gear shifts are slightly faster but it remains a relaxed car to drive there's a nice bit of response early on the pickup is really good and that is the result of the 48 volt mild hybrid tech that bottom end is really nice and of course made it to the engine is a 9 speed automatic which means the ratios are nice and short closely stacked so you always are in the power band and once you're at highway speeds triple digit speeds you can cruise around 100 120 kph and stay under 2000 rpm which means the refinement is very very good too no road noise no wind buffeting and the engine is nice and quiet all the way around 3000 rpm after that you hear a faint raspy exhaust if you tend to push the car a bit but nothing goes you know nothing that will feel out of place it is very calm and very relaxing handling manners well again nothing really to boast about the steering is nice and light body control is quite nice and the car overall has decent grip of course you wouldn't tend to push a car like this so you know under steer over steer it's not really something that this car bothers with what it does is just waft along the road nice and smooth along the bends and even though this does not have the air suspension like i mentioned it still feels adept and composed as the speed rises it gets nice and flat very stable and of course in an environment that suits autobahn it will be absolutely at home Now inside the updated E class the first thing you notice is the dashboard and it's not a traditional dashboard in that sense because what it is is a big display you can see three screens in front of you one of course is the digital instrument cluster highly customizable lots of themes and you know things that you can move around but then you have the big 14.4 inch touch screen the central touch screen which is the main unit that is basically the brains of the car every feature is packed in here but then you also have a 12.3 inch screen for the passenger as well and that means if the passenger or the boss wants to sit in the front he can control his own multimedia using that screen you can watch videos on it you can stream as well and what the other thing of course on the e class is this selfie camera that allows you to do video conferencing as well will a lot of people use it maybe not but it definitely is something that is unique and that is definitely helpful in some situations as well apart from that the steering wheel is all new typical mercedes a plethora of buttons on it Uh, but doesn't take time to get used to it you have to be nice and gentle with it you can't really rush it and you know treat it as physical buttons because a lot of it is haptic touch and haptic feedback so you have to be a bit careful but it doesn't take too long to get used to on the center console you have this nice open pore wood as well which is really nice to the touch and everywhere you feel it is soft touch padding material no hard plastics nothing that creaks and rattles so it definitely is very very upmarket Of course the lack of physical buttons is felt especially when you have to turn up the AC or you know play around with the climate control because even the vents on this car are digital and that doesn't always work and you do miss 
manual control for the fan speed etc then it comes to the seat comfort which on the new e class is absolutely excellent the seat comfort the cushioning the support it is all superb you also have these nice soft pillows that help a lot as well you also have memory functions for the driver seat sadly no memory functions for the passenger seat electric adjust is part of the package as well but what the e class misses out on is ventilated option that is a bit strange especially given our country and given the climate however apart from that you get a center space for storage you have a type c port in there you have two usb ports in here as well along with a wireless charging option however since this is a long wheel base and this is an e class the focus is always going to be in the back now this is the 12.3 inch passenger display on the new mercedes benz e class and given that owners nowadays tend to sit in the front seat i think it is a good addition of course this is a pressure sensitive screen so which means if it's only the chauffeur then this screen won't be enabled you can't really control it from the driver seat this seat needs to be occupied for this to turn on you just press on and now what you have basically is a smaller version of the mbux all your basic settings navigation media uh, you know all your other settings as well so you can control it from here and you also have a browser which means if you're connected to the internet you can watch some youtube get some searches done a uh, lot of apps as well disney plus is part of the package so yeah it definitely is something that is useful it's not just a gimmick and like i said because owners now tend to sit in this seat they can make use of this but of course let us know down in the comments what you think of the passenger seat In dimension the new E class is longer in length taller in height and has a longer wheelbase than before road presence as a result is a plenty up front it gets led headlamps in the latest mog design language that signifies this is an E class however the digital led lights are reserved for the top of the line E450 the star studded grille with the huge mercedes logo adds the necessary bling and over to the side the added length gives it that much needed limousine look of the S class and flush door handles like a maybach Similar to the BMW 5 series the E class also gets 18 inch wheels but the design of the spokes that stretches to the end of the rim gives it a perception of a bigger wheel and as a result doesn't feel disproportionate like the BMW There's also a larger rear quarter glass now a tribute to the Maybach S class At the rear it gets LED tail lamps with the tri aro design embedded and a healthy dose of chrome as well Also a talking point is that the 510 liter boot space is now far more practical thanks to the space saver that sits under the boot floor. Prices for the E200 start at 78.5 lakh rupees that's around 2 lakh more than the predecessor and a whopping 5.6 lakh more than its main rival the arch rival the BMW 5 series which you also now get in long wheelbase guys. that is going to be one hell of a comparison but don't worry we are already on it and you will find the answer very very soon as to which one of these is the better buy however for now the E200 takes a lot of boxes it is a big improvement compared to the older car which is a feat in itself it is bigger more spacious more comfortable definitely more tech laden and just is a better well rounded package is it better than a 5 we'll find that out very soon so stay tuned to autoka india subscribe to the channel and do let us know down in the comments what you think of this new e class